Getting into med school is simple. Yeah, I think it's simple. Now, I don't think it's easy, but I do think that it's simple. There's really only six things, I call them the six levers, that you can pull on to increase your chances at getting into medical school. Now, med school admissions can often be this nebulous black box. I bet you're scouring the internet or asking your friends to find answers to these questions. And what does the internet give you? Well, more questions. Because also on the internet is that 4.0 GPA, 528 MCAT student from Johns Hopkins with a triple major who is asking what her chances are. Now, if she's asking that question, there's no way that you have a chance, right? No, not right. Medical school admissions is simple. And today we're going to learn each and every one of those six levers so you can have a definitive organized understanding of what medical schools look for and how you can improve your own application with that same system. Main idea number one, levers versus non-levers. The main distinction that I have between levers and non-levers are that levers are things that you can pull on things that you can change to actually affect your medical school chances. Non-levers, on the other hand, are things that you can't change, things that you can't pull on. As an example, here are some non-levers that do matter in med school admissions. Your undergrad school, your state of residence, your adverse circumstances, your major, racial background, whether you're overrepresented or underrepresented in medicine. All these things do matter to a point, but they are difficult or impossible to change. No matter whether you go to Harvard or live in Wyoming, these factors impact you just like everyone else. I wouldn't recommend the Wyoming student to move to Texas just to get a better chance at those Texas state schools. Instead of focusing on these non-levers, I think there's enough to focus on on the levers that are much more in your control and can have a large, large, large impact on your overall admissions chances. Instead of ho-humming about the non-levers, such as being overrepresented in medicine, you can focus all of your attention on the levers and become so compelling that medical schools actually fight to have you. The harder you pull on these levers, the higher your chances at admission to your dream medical school. Main idea number two, how I determined that these are the six most important levers. Again, medical school admissions is simple. I didn't make up any of these six levers. In fact, I just pulled it straight from the application itself. These six levers end up directly on the medical school application you eventually submit to admissions committees. And this is what they talk about when they decide on which students to admit and which students to reject. If you wanna see real examples of real med students applying to medical school, I have a couple of videos doing a beginning to end review of primary applications. You can find that playlist here and you can see each and every one of these six levers represented. And if you want your own copies of those applications, just so you can learn from them, I have them in the description box. And if you want me to look at your six levers, even if you haven't applied to medical school yet, you can go check out application dissection, where I comprehensively evaluate each and every one of your six levers, no matter where you are in the pre-med journey. So let's talk about each of these levers. The academic levers, levers one and two, your GPA and your MCAT score. So of course, this will be at the beginning of every one of your med school applications. And why is it important? Your GPA is a reflection of you over time and your MCAT is really how you perform on these high pressure situations on one or two or three days. Now, let me be clear. It's not a test of intellect. It doesn't say how great of a doctor you'll be. It really is just a proxy to see if you can handle the load of information that you'll see in medical school, residency, and eventually as a practicing physician. And while I do say that, unfortunately, I do think it's just a way for programs to now help them filter through the 50,000 applications they get every single year. Of course, knowing that that's part of the game, know that those are two levers that you can pull at any time to increase or decrease your medical school admissions odds. Lever three, the personality lever. These are your extracurricular activities. If you've been to a doctor for you or for your loved one, you know that medicine is really a two-way street. What happens in those clinic visits is really a conversation between two groups of people, the doctor, the patients, and maybe even other family members. In short, being a doctor is a profession that works directly with people. Even if you're going to become a pathologist, they work hand in hand with their other colleagues. Medicine is a team game between colleague and colleague and also physician and patient. You're going to have to learn how to build a relationship quickly 
educate patients who didn't go through eight to 12 years of schooling like you did and get them to understand why these medications or this surgery is going to be better for their long-term health. Extracurricular activities are a way for you to develop some of these soft people skills and show medical schools that you're just not a textbook studying robot, that you have passions and skills outside of medicine. In addition, modern medicine is becoming quickly very interdisciplinary. Traditionally, you had physicians who also interfaced with the world of science. You had these MD, PhD physician scientists. Nowadays, you have physician politicians, physician artists, physician tech bros, people who have combined different disciplines have advanced the field as a whole. And so your interests in basketball, community health, economics, computer science, it's all becoming increasingly relevant. And so extracurricular activities sound simple enough, just go live your life and do what you like. Fine, easy. But then you get around to it and shoot a Google search for medical school extracurriculars and find 475,000 results. Oh, browse Reddit and SDN and you'll find people insisting that every pre-med should scribe, become an EMT, and publish in research. That seems to be the trifecta that will get any pre-med into any medical school. But if you look at real medical students, just like those in my full medical school application review series, you'll find a wide range of extracurricular activities, ranging from EMTing and doing research, but also to coaching youth basketball and being a pen pal for a breast cancer survivor and serving as a TA to help incarcerated people earn their associate's degrees. Now, if we get technical here and look at the actual categories that the AAMC allows for extracurricular activities, you'll find 18 of these categories. As you can see, they range from artistic endeavors to community service volunteer that is medical, that is non-medical, to conferences attended all the way down to presentations, posters, publications, research, and teaching, tutoring, teaching assistant. Really, I boil it down to about seven key categories. Active clinical experiences, shadowing, leadership or team-based experiences, research experiences, volunteer experiences, teaching or mentorship experiences, and non-clinical experiences or it factors and hobbies. And really the ultimate goal is to set yourself apart or be exceptional in a couple of things. One way I like organizing this information is through something I call three pillars exercise. Now, not only do extracurricular activities range in content, they surely range in quality as well. Lever four, your letters of recommendation. Everything else on the application is essentially done or directed by you. Your GPA, based on your test scores. Your MCAT, how you did on that day. Your personal statement, written by you. All of it is largely you. For medical schools, it can be very useful to get a sense of how other professionals view you, especially when they're trying to make a decision between who gets that seat in their school. Why it's important. Tell me if you've heard of this scenario before. You got this pre-med who's trying to apply to medical school and they're six months out and they just found out that they have to apply with two science letters of recommendation. And usually this is the one that gets them the one non-science letter of recommendation. Remember, med schools are using this to really determine who earns a seat and who doesn't based on what these professional professors and managers and bosses say about you and you're gonna have that freshman year professor where you took intro to Buddhism in a class of 200 people where you happen to get an A, that person's gonna write your letter of recommendation? We're in a world of trouble. Now, if that's your reality, not a big deal. You'll get through it and we'll figure out how to make the most out of your runway. You might decide to apply anyway and just eat the decreased odds at admission because that lever of yours is weak. Or you can intentionally decide to push your cycle back a year to find candidates that will strongly support your application. And both are really up to your risk tolerance but it's important to know what you're giving up with each decision. But if you're watching this for two or three years of runway before you apply to medical school, make this a priority. Build strong relationships knowing that eventually someone will have to support your application and you want that someone to know you really well. If you wanna learn a little bit more about how your GPA and your MCAT can affect your admissions odds, I have a whole video diving deep into that specific topic. It's called, Your Med School Chances Are Higher Than You Think. I put it here. Now, if you wanna see one of my own letters of recommendation that I submitted to medical school, you can find that full analysis on another video that I have linked here. It's titled, My UCLA Letter of Recommendation. Lever five, your school list. 
Building a school list is a highly customizable process, depending on your goals, your state of residence, and your overall risk tolerance. For most folks, this won't apply at all until you actually start your application. And when you're there, I highly recommend WedgeDog's applicant rating system. It offers a suggestion on how to proportion your school list between reach, targets, and safety schools. I won't try to improve on that tool. I think it's a well-established tool and it's good enough for you to build your own school list. Feel free to check it out no matter where you are in your pre-med journey, but don't spend too much time on it because there are other levers that you need to pull if you're earlier on in your pre-med journey. Lever six, the personal statement, secondaries, and interviews. This is your opportunity to tell admissions committees in long form writing and eventually in an interview setting. In fact, the prompt for personal statements is verbatim use the space provided to explain why you want to go to medical school. The secondary applications are wide ranging and individualized based on the school, but in essence, they often fall into three different buckets. The diversity question, the adversity question, and the why us question. In multiple mini interviews where you cycle through a couple of stations and see some ethical scenarios and teamwork based scenarios, just so that the medical school can meet you in different lights with different people and get a more nuanced understanding of who you are. Of course, each of those components of this sixth lever are important, but I just grouped them together as an opportunity for you to really show who you are, your personality, share your story in a more long form manner. Those are the six things that I think you can actively affect and therefore should be the sole focus of your entire pre-med journey. How do you increase these levers? For some of them, levers one and two, it's a little bit simpler. Just earn a higher GPA, take more courses, take more units with the MCAT to retake it and see a better score. Simple, numbers based, fine. But just because it's black and white doesn't mean that there are certain tiers of excellence. I've showed you different extracurricular activities and different letters recommendations. And I think you and I can both agree that certain ones are of a different caliber than others. I encourage you to jot down your six levers, grade yourself out of 10 and see what are your strengths so that you can double down on them and what are your weaknesses so that you can cover them up and make sure that there are no red flags. For example, if you have a 3.95 GPA, I'd really consider that a nine or a 10 out of 10 GPA lever, but your letter of recommendation for a non-science professor is a one out of 10 because the professor can really only say, hey, Mike got an A in my freshman year course intro to Buddhism then your letter of recommendation lever might be on the order of three out of 10 or four out of 10. To me, it's very clear that you should spend way, way more time trying to develop a relationship with a humanities professor than it is for you to study extra for your organic chemistry final. Worst case scenario, someone with a 3.95 GPA gets a B, B minus on an OCHEM final. Fine, GPA goes from 3.95 to 3.92 still. I think it's a nine out of 10. But if you can use those 10, 20 hours to develop a relationship with a non-humanities letter of recommendation writer that really can vouch for you more than just your grading that class, your letter of recommendation lever goes up, 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 maybe from four out of 10 to seven out of 10. And now you have a more balanced application. Now, if there's something in your application that you know is a serious strength for you, look to double down on it. See how hard you can crank that lever so that it completely and utterly sets you apart from every other applicant out there. You wanna be known as that guy who advocates for incarcerated youth's education, or you wanna be known as that guy who did clinical research for breast cancer, was a pen pal for breast cancer, and he's completely engrossed in that disease process and that population. You wanna be known as that guy or that girl, just like Steph Curry is known as that guy who can shoot from anywhere on the court, or Hassan Minaj being known as that comedian who integrates political themes into his comedy. So now, no matter what question you have about medical school admissions, you have a systematic framework that you can use, apply to your own pre-med journey to answer any question. If the question is, will publications significantly impact my application? Well, if your extracurricular activities from a research standpoint are already nine out of 10, maybe they help, maybe they don't. But maybe you should look to lever one, your 3.4 GPA, because that has some serious room to grow. Or maybe you can make the argument that this is going to define you as that research guy for hematopoietic stem cells. And you wanna be set apart on that avenue. Still, whatever you decide, the six levers gives you a systematic approach to really evaluating 
where your strengths lie and where your weaknesses are. Hopefully that helped and I will see you in the next one. Later.